It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is the Locked On Auburn Podcast, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast, presented by Fetch Me Home Delivery. Use promo code FETCHME20 for your first delivery free. Zach Blackerby, Michael Papp is here with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Zach. Merry Christmas to the all of you listeners out there. So uh, don't think we're crazy. We're, we're not recording this on Christmas. I'm actually in in Dallas on my way to Arizona. I am in Ohio chilling mm. at my mother-in-law's place. Wild that we can still pull off a great podcast. It's the power of the Locked on Auburn podcast and technology. Mm. No, So if, uh, if something crazy happened... Last night or the day before, that is why we are not covering it today. But we, you know, we kind of debated on what we're going to call this episode. We're going to do our, our, our top five things in regards to, we can call it Christmas wishes for Auburn football for 2020 or New Year's resolutions for the Auburn football program in 2020. Take your pick. But it's kind of the same thing. We're just, we're, we're doing this on Christmas. So mm-hmm. um, are we going in any particular order, Michael, or you just want to kind of do... I didn't really rank mine in order. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, my first one is in 2020, I think it should be a goal for Auburn to get a thousand yard rusher. Mm -hmm. They they went on an awesome tear of, you know, having it several years in a row. And then the last two seasons, unless Booby Whitlow goes off in a few days, it's, um, it's not going to happen for two straight years. And I think, uh, I think next year is the year to kind of get back on track with that. We had a, uh, you know, in fact, at the time of recording this, we had a, a caller leave a, a voicemail asking about the running back situation. And there's a lot of talented guys that have the ability to do that. With Booby, I think he had the talent to do it. It was just staying healthy and, and being available. So, you know, is it is it Tank Bigsby moving forward? Is it DJ Williams? I don't think the I don't think the coaching staff can trust Booby Whitlow to be a, be an, a, an available back, being the bell cow. Each and every mm-hmm. week. And, you know, it's nothing against Booby. I just don't think that's what his role should be moving forward. So we'll see. We'll see. You know, Mark Anthony Richards, he battled injury. He started out his career in a similar way than Booby Whitlow did, you know. And so both of them with shoulder injuries, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So that is um, that is my first uh, New Year's resolution slash uh, Christmas wish for Auburn football for 2020 is Auburn to get a thousand yard rusher. Uh, mine is going to my first one's going to be a Christmas wish. It is going to be for the Auburn football complex, or for the football only complex. Sorry, kind of. Yeah, to get the ball rolling with that. That's a great get, one. Yeah, to get uh, the Christmas wish is to get the funding, get the the architecture, the construction, get it ready. Hopefully, breaking ground in uh, in twenty twenty. Wow, you know, just or at least the plans in place. Yeah, they, I was going to say they might have to do some demo mm-hmm. depending on where they decide to put it and everything. So. Um, I got it. You know, getting the construction project started. I guess also a lot of the times these construction things, especially around Auburn, they take some time. Mm-hmm. I bet this one is once they start, they fight to get it up pretty quick. I mean, it's an arms race, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, the main thing is going to be funding, which I know they've done a great job already. Yeah, putting together you know the biggest gift in Auburn athletics history. From the Waltos family, mm-hmm. and Malzahn's donated some to it as well, and a lot of folks. Bruce Pearl donated to the. I don't think to this complex, but to Auburn Athletics for something. Didn't okay, he? yeah, I'm sure. And I know did. Butch Thompson has done a bunch of fundraising also. So we're in kind of a, a, a great golden age for for fundraising for Auburn Athletics right now, and, and I know they think this football only complex is very important. So hopefully. They can uh, get the construction project started in 2020. I like that. That's a great one. That one didn't even cross my mind. That's my favorite so far. Wow. wow. I'm honored. How about that? How about that? All right. Uh, one of mine is uh, I want to see Seth Williams earn a spot on the SEC first team in 2020. Miss the list altogether this year, which you and I texted about, it, I believe, which is crazy. I think, uh, I think he's got a shot with Bo Nix taking that step forward next year. And obviously the offense as a whole taking its step forward with Chad Morris coming in. And, you know, I, I still think Chad Morris is going to call plays. If an announcement on that has been made prior to the, uh, the airing of this episode, I will gladly admit I'm wrong. But that's just kind of that's just kind of my feeling. 
going forward. And I think that benefits the receivers and there. I mean, in most passing plays that Auburn called, it seems like the, the ball would snap and Bo Nix just stared down Seth Williams. And I bet you see a little less of that, but it's no doubt. And it's no question who Auburn's number one wide receiver will be in 2020. It's Seth Williams. And this will be his last year. I think at Auburn, I think he's a, a leave early guy just because of his frame and I think there will be some things that he develops with. You know, I, I think you'll see less of the, the silly penalties that we saw him commit in the Iron Bowl. And I think there were a few other ones throughout the year. There were some plays that he took plays off. And I, I think you just see less and less of that as he grows and matures as a player and a person. Yeah, and I've got one that goes hand in hand with that. All right, go ahead. Um, I, I got a New Year's resolution, expanding the passing concepts. Okay. And yeah. I think Chad Morris is going to be a huge part of that. Uh, Justin wrote, uh, Justin Ferguson in front of the program wrote a great story on The Athletic about what Chad Morris can bring to this offense. He's also on ESPN 1067. Yes, he is on the lunch break. And so I, I think that that's going to be something that happens. Uh, I'm excited to see it. Uh, I think that, like you said, Bo Nix's development should certainly help with that also. And the thing for Seth Williams this year was that, you know, you got three guys at LSU and four guys at Alabama that. Yeah you know, made those all SEC lists or, or well, deserve to. And you look at it going forward, it's like, all right, Waddle's still going to be at Alabama. There's talk about Ruggs staying in Alabama. I'll believe it when I see it type thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, as far as talent goes and recruitment goes, it's George Pickens. And now there's rumblings that he may not even be with the team next year. So we'll uh, we'll see how bad that is moving forward. So Seth Williams has got a, a clear-cut path for it. And, yeah, I, I think as far as the passing offense developing and growing as a unit, Seth Williams is going to have to be a big part of that. Yep, I agree. Your team. Okay, let's get it. Locked on LSU, your team every day. Welcome back in to Locked on Bama. You're going to hear about it all week long on Locked on Buckeyes. Every day. Monday through Friday. When it comes to the biggest stories. Everybody's talking, and we're not excluded from the mix. Everything that you could want from a post-game recap, we're going to do. They're far and away the number one team in the country. Winning at this point is the only thing that matters. It's going to put you in meaningful games later. You need to be locked on. Tua is the best of us. He is an incredible kid, immensely talented, and it's such a shame that his fairy tale ending was actually at the beginning. Wherever you get your podcasts. In the Apple Podcast app. Google Podcasts. Spotify. Hit us up with those five stars, and we're going to be here five days a week. Oh, One yeah. star for every day of the week. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to hear more shows like this, well, just go to LockedOnPodcast.com. All right, I've got, a, I've got another one that kind of has to do with that. I've got Bo Nix gets SEC Offensive Player of the Year. We saw, uh, we saw the growth with Joe Burrow last year when he got a, an offensive mind, a solid offensive mind to come in and help develop him. I think a similar situation could be had here. This is definitely looking at it glass half full, but that's um, I think that's a good goal to have. You know, you you mm -hmm. went you win uh, you win freshman of the year, SEC freshman of the year, and so all right, take that that natural next step. I think Bo Nix is a goal oriented guy. He's going to work his tail off, and he gets another off season, a full off season this time, as being part of the program, working with his wide receivers, and I think the offense once again is going to get a a shot in the arm with Chad Morris. So. That is uh, that's a big one, but yeah, Bo Nix getting SEC offense offense, bleh. Bo Nix getting SEC offensive player of the year. I think that is a great goal for 2020 and an awesome Christmas wish that I think a lot of Auburn fans will be pumped for. I'm trying to think of of guys that are returning that you'd say that they're kind of up could could be up for that award, and yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't really have anyone in mind. You maybe Jake Fromm if he comes back, he'll have a shot at it just from name wreck. <sighs> yeah. Name kind rec helps. Career Achievement Award also. Right, which would be a shame, but I mean, it's, it's, it's got a shot there. I think Mac Jones or whoever gets the job at Alabama is going to be probably an early favorite for it. Jake Bentley left South Carolina, so I'm just trying to think throughout the conference, like who's your favorite going into it? Uh, I got no one. Yeah, I, I got no one. That's so like go this get it, Bo Nix. Yeah. Go get it. I mean, you could say Jalen Waddle, but it's more likely that whoever throws him the ball yeah. would win it over him. He, so. he would have to have an incredible amount of yards. for that, And he'd yeah. have to have like three or four punt returns and, and, and all of that good stuff as well. So, yeah, I, I just see a, a hard time with him, with him doing that. And then 
So mine is kind of goes not hand in hand, but uh, I got a Christmas wish for a backup quarterback. Okay, I think that's very important. The guy at Kentucky? N- no, no. Well, just, Joey Gay was at Kentucky now. Yeah, so uh, that's why Auburn football they need a backup quarterback. Makes sense. Um, maybe it's Cord. Maybe he can be that guy. But I mean, we've said it. He's kind of said it. Uh, they didn't. He wants to be a coach. That's he, that's the path that he yeah, wants to go. He didn't really come to Auburn with the. He's got some legs on I, him, though, man. He can move. I, I shouldn't say he didn't come with the intent to play. I, I'm sure he wants to play. But that was not really his his path, right? And so having a guy that you feel comfortable with, if, uh, God forbid, something happens to, to Bo Nix, then uh, I think it's important that Auburn has a backup QB. And hopefully this is now... Hopefully this is looking more more realistic because someone big came in on signing day. That has happened between when uh, we recorded this and when it's been released. But you, you got McLaughlin coming in, yeah, and maybe he's the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Chad, maybe uh, Chandler Morris has signed, and he could be the backup quarterback. We don't, you know, at, as the time we're talking about this, and really, we won't know who the backup quarterback is going to be until the the first depth chart. comes Yeah, I out. mean, re- regardless if so. a five star comes in, uh, Malzahn is still going to make him compete mm-hmm. with with Court Sandberg, and that's good for everybody involved. Heck, maybe they'll push Bo Nix a little bit, too. I mean, we saw Bo Nix get better with Joey Gatewood kind of forcing him, and it sounds like Bo Nix stepped up and Joey didn't in, in training camp. So that'll, um, yeah, I, I think that's a great one. All right, my turn? Mm-hmm. All right, I've got um, hug Kevin Steele more. Okay. Just hug him, appreciate him while he's here, because I don't know how much longer he's going to want to do this. Yeah, I, I, I like that one. Short I've got... Sweet. I've got uh, build Derek Brown a monument. <laughs> I don't know if that's a New Year's resolution or a Christmas gift. I think that's more of a Christmas gift. A but Christmas you can, wish. You, yeah, but uh, but you can do it in 2020. I'm cool with it. I, uh, I I know. I guess technically he didn't win any of the big defensive awards. Obviously, he didn't win a Heisman Trophy, and those are the the statues that we have uh, outside the stadium are Heisman Trophy winners. But he won a, an award that is just as much if not more, for off-the-field stuff in the Lot Impact Trophy. Um, I, I think that it'd be really cool if the guy, the NCAA football team started treating that how the NFL has started treating the uh, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award sure. as that being kind of maybe not the, the, the biggest award that a, a person can get. Not a player. N- not necessarily the biggest player. Award, yeah, you know? that's cool. So, And, you know, I, I bet you see... A graphic of him, like, you know, there's someone with, like, Carlos Rogers and Nick Fairley all throughout mm-hmm. the stadium. I, I bet you see one with, with Derek Brown on there. I bet you see that next year. I really hope so. I hope so, too. I think he deserves it. I mean, especially when, you know, the, the big part of what you do as far as recruitment, both students and athletes, is the yeah. Auburn family and, you know, the way you treat people and all of that. Like, I think that lines up with what, as a university, what you would want to preach. And he's practicing what Auburn's preaching. So I, I, I'm i right there with you. I think that's a big deal. And I think it's fair to say that one of the one of the jobs that a university would tell you that they have and take the most seriously is to take, you know, kids that graduate from high school and are kids. Mm-hmm. Like, I was a kid when I came to Auburn. Sure. And... and I think a university would tell you that one of their biggest jobs they think is to take people from being kids to being well-rounded adults when they when they leave Auburn. And I think they've, you know, I don't know that much about who Derek Brown was as a person when he got to Auburn, but it's hard to argue with the kind of person he is now that he's leaving and the impact that he's had in our community, whether it's on the field or off the field. And I definitely think that's something that should be Well, Auburn honored. folks love the term Auburn man and Auburn woman, and he is um – He's definitely an Auburn man. There's, there's no doubt about him. All right, I have have ten wins in the regular season in 2020. Uh, I think this is one of the more doable years that we have seen that um, on paper for an Auburn schedule. I think it's good that Auburn gets Georgia earlier in the year, mm-hmm. uh, especially if, if Jake Fromm leaves. I think that's even more so just because. You don't know who's going to kind of come in and, and develop behind him and what that speed is of development is going to look like. So I think that's a, that's a part of it. And then, um, I mean, winning on the road in Alabama is going to be tough. 
and you know beating LSU at home the week before that it's going to be tough but that was really you know can Auburn win three out of four or two out of four this year was the, the talk between LSU Georgia Oregon and Alabama and now looking at next year I don't think North Carolina is really a question I just don't have a whole lot of I'm not going to throw a lot of praise their way I just don't see it quite yet so it's can Auburn win two out of three when you look at LSU, Georgia, and Alabama? I mean, I think like most years, that's it. You know, you don't have a Florida and you don't have an Oregon next year. So I think yeah. I think I think ten wins is possible. I totally agree. I think a ten and two season, and based on who those two are, I think you've got a shot at it all if you go ten and two. I've got don't lose a game, not in the sense of wow, not necessarily in the sense of the final score, but if you. Okay. If you're going to lose a game, like, on the scoreboard, if you're going to lose a game, make it be that another team beat you. Okay. Because I think coming out of this season, the losses that Auburn took, we, we you and I specifically, and, and Auburn fans in general, were much more disappointed in the way that Auburn played and didn't really feel like Auburn got beat. They felt like Auburn lost the game. So would you say that for all three games that Auburn lost, that Auburn lost them? Because I think you could say that for Florida. I don't think you could say that for LSU. I don't think you could say that for Georgia. I think that it Georgia, I think Auburn really got beat. I think that Auburn, you know, left a lot of points on the field in that LSU game. Sure. And made LSU really uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and was in a position where they didn't really give the game away, but they definitely could have won that game. And, I mean, even doing after the game, most of the people who called in after that game were really disappointed and felt like Auburn had chances to win that game and and probably should have. But, uh, and like we just talked about with the schedule going into the next season, I don't think there's really uh, uh, any teams that, that really scare you and be like, you know, I'm fearful going into this game that Auburn is just going to get beat. Okay. Like this season going to LSU, you, you, there's always a fear that LSU is just going to beat beat you down. Mm-hmm. right? Especially as good as that offense was this season. Well, they did to pretty much everybody but Auburn this yeah. year. Yeah, and... And you saw Georgia, who has similar levels of talent, so we thought, especially on defense, mm-hmm. do the three one seven thing, and it was an embarrassment for them. Mm-hmm. So, at the end of the day, I, I think that, and part of that is not losing a game against a team you shouldn't lose to. Yeah, because Auburn shouldn't get beat by a team that a team really like Ole Miss or Mississippi State or. And you could throw into that, don't lose to a first-year head coach. Mm-hmm. Don't lose to a guy in his first season. Who would, who, would that, who would that be? Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. I mean, that's really the one that you're most afraid of. Pittman in Arkansas, I don't yeah. think that's going to be an issue. Arkansas just doesn't have the talent right now, I just. Yeah, and they made with him. I mean, he, a, lot of, a lot of Georgia people were saying, like, this is a big deal. So we'll see. A lot of people really loved the hire. I was kind of like, you hired someone's offensive line coach? I wasn't really familiar with him, but he's apparently an awesome recruiter. Yeah. So that's that's what Arkansas needs. Mm-hmm. So uh, did you do all five of yours? Yes. I've got an extra one, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chalk this up as, a, I guess it could be both a, a Christmas wish for Auburn folks and a 2020 New Year's resolution. Start out 2020 with some positive momentum. Yeah. Beat, beat Minnesota in the Outback Bowl. I mean, day, day mm-hmm. one, say, okay, you know, this is – this is uh this is what we want to see and so you look at what that did in 09 going into the 2010 season you win the Outback Bowl Auburn won that game like four times against Northwestern one of the weirdest games I've ever watched and then you use that positive momentum you get a dude named Cam Newton and the rest was history for that year you didn't lose that year counting your bowl game so that's um that's fun and then the last time Auburn was there against Wisconsin it didn't go well and interestingly enough, the next season didn't look very good. So I, I don't think it's all because you won or lost the Iron Bowl, but there's some parallels there. Bowl so, game. Yeah. Not Iron Bowl, bowl game. Yep. Yep. That's it. There's but, a difference. I mean, you could even look at 2019. They whooped Purdue in, in the 
in the bowl game and, and took that positive momentum into a nine and three season against an incredibly tough schedule. Yeah, and in 2017, you had a great season. Then you lose the bowl game to UCF, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden that that season kind of, when you think about it, leaves a sour taste in your mouth. And the following year, you pretty much had the same team, and it didn't. It just didn't work. It didn't work. I mean, you lost carry on, but that wasn't all of it. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yeah, have some positive momentum going into the offseason, especially when you've got a lot of young guys coming back. That's important. That's important. And, you know, it's another win over a very good opponent, mm-hmm. a double-digit win opponent. Yeah, maybe you finish in the top 10 with three losses. Make it happen. You probably do. You probably do, yeah. So that's something that uh, that you can wave your flag on. Man, Merry Christmas to you, bud. Merry Christmas to you too, Zach. And Merry Christmas to everyone listening. We'll uh, we'll try to have shows every day through this uh, this week off that we've kind of got. So we're um, we're planning on it. We're doing a lot of pre recording. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys tune in for all of these and use this as a little bit of an escape with dealing with family and all that stuff. So we'll be back tomorrow. This has been another edition of the Locked On Auburn Podcast. Merry Christmas. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.